Welcome to this short service which is being shared with the parishes of Turton Moreland team. Wherever you are, please join in, uh, do comment, do add prayers if you would like. These are strange and disturbing times. It feels very odd to be doing a service from the vicarage rather than from church. The Bible speaks of joyous trips to the temple. In the Psalms, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. But it also speaks of God who is present with his people in the wilderness. Forty years of wandering and being unsettled after the Exodus. But God was with them. And it speaks of people discovering God's presence when they were in exile, away from their land with no temple. Although finding God in a time of exile was not always easy. Psalm 137 has the question, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Because for now we cannot go to the house of the Lord, but we can discover God is with us in our homes. We cannot gather physically, but the wonders of the internet mean that we can share together, even if not physically together. And so if we can't start together with a hymn, we can draw on verses from the Psalms. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A well-known verse is from Psalm 100. Oh, be joyful in the land, all you land, in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Those are our values. May they shape our living at this time. May our homes be places of grace, mercy and peace. And may we live grace, mercy and peace for others. We're going to follow the basic order of service outline that many of us know and are nourished by. And so the Collect for Purity, if you're at home, do join in if you know the words. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We remind ourselves also of the summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so some prayers of confession. We ask for God's forgiveness for ourselves. Forgive us, gracious God, when we have not loved you as we should, when we have turned in on ourselves, or let fear and anxiety conquer. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We ask God's forgiveness on his church. Forgive us, gracious God, when we have spoken of faith, but have not lived it, when we have been lukewarm in our worship, or taken what we have for granted. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. We ask God's forgiveness on our world. Forgive us, gracious God, as a world where we have turned away from you, where we have not cared for your creation, nor had concern for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. 
pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And the collect, the prayer which is set for this Sunday, the fifth Sunday of Lent. Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world. Grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and who reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The two readings that are set for this Sunday, one from the Old Testament, from the prophet Ezekiel, and from the Gospel of John, John chapter 11. We're going to focus on the reading from Ezekiel. From Ezekiel chapter 37. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and he set me down in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. And he said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. And so I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. And I prophesied as he commanded me. And the breath came into them, and they lived, and they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. And then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil, and then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Ezekiel's vision of dry bones and the question, can these bones live again? Some of us will know that Old Testament reading at least a bit. From the prophet Ezekiel, it speaks of a valley of dry bones, a valley with the long dead remains of a fallen army, and the bones are bleached and dry. And they symbolise Israel, which has been destroyed by the Babylonians. So many of them had died, so many were suffering, and the leaders had been taken away into exile. Could their country live again? Our own situation today is not as severe as that, of course, uh, not in our country at least, but it is serious. What is our future? Are we going to have to live with this sort of shutdown again and maybe again? 
Can our economy cope? What sort of world are we moving into? Has it gone irretrievably wrong? The Old Testament prophets challenged the people to return to God, to live by God's commands. Today, the secular prophets remind us that we are running out of time in terms of global warming, that our maltreatment of animals has probably led to coronavirus getting into the human chain. As Christians, we must be careful how we talk. There are some who are so quick to speak of God's judgments, it's almost as if they are hoping God will judge us. But that doesn't mean that we should be silent. So how do we think about what is happening at the moment? I think it's better to view this disaster, which is a natural disaster, even though aggravated and probably instigated by human actions, we should view it first as a tragedy. A tragedy for those who suffer and who will suffer. God weeps for those who suffer. Some are saying it's become a trauma. Trauma cuts deep into the psyche of individuals and communities. It leaves them scarred. And second, it is a reminder. It's a reminder that the world God has given us does need to be cared for properly. It's a reminder that the world God has given us is interconnected and complex. It's a reminder that actions have consequences and some escalate quickly. The God of the Bible calls on us to care for the world and to care for our fellow humans. If we're honest, we know that many of us benefit at the expense of others. That is wrong. As well as a tragedy and a reminder, it may also be described as a sign or a portent, a crisis. It is a turning point moment if we choose to take it. And if we don't, then the consequences will be worse. In times of crisis, some people turn to God in prayer. Others feel it is proof that God is not there in the first place. <coughs> but it's also an opportunity. But if we see it as an opportunity to change our ways, to move to more sustainable ways of living, a greater concern for our basic needs, we must not forget the tragic effects it has on others. We cannot rush to see this as an opportunity without knowing the full cost. And Ezekiel and Jeremiah, for that matter, the prophets who spoke of judgment and crisis, they didn't do so from outside the situation. They lived and they suffered through the chaos and the violence of their time. They spoke from the ground level, not from an ivory tower. They knew for themselves family suffering and rejection. And they spoke both of judgment and hope. Can even the driest of bones live again? Ezekiel has to ask God back that question. You alone know. It's not an easy question. Is God really the God of life? Will God end this contagion or plague which is paralysing our world? St Paul writing to Timothy says, I know the one in whom I have put my trust. And I am sure that Christ is able to guard until that day what I have entrusted to him. I know, and I am sure, he says. And Paul too spoke and wrote from ground level, often from prison. Last week, I was watching a streamed service, and uh, they had a hymn, they had a pianist and a hymn. I'm not quite sure if the minister had chosen the hymn with sufficient care, because they were playing, Breathe on me, breath of God. Well, breathing on people at the moment is not a good idea. We want masks to keep breathing away from us. Well, maybe, maybe they had chosen that hymn with extraordinary care, because actually at this time when our breath is potentially poisonous, how much do we need the life-giving breath of God? And in that reading from Ezekiel, it is the breath of God, as powerful as the four winds and yet personal which breathes life into those figures. Just as the Creator breathed into the first human form, that first human formed from the clay in Genesis 2. And after the resurrection, Jesus breathed on his disciples and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. And in history, in, by tradition, often at baptism, the priest has breathed on the person being baptised as a symbol of them receiving the Holy Spirit. 
At the moment, human breath, though, is not for sharing. But all the more, then, we can pray. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. And the Gospel reading, which is set for day, please read it from John chapter 11. It's a long passage. It tells of the death of Lazarus, Jesus' friend, and it includes the reaction of his sisters, Mary and Martha. They react differently in their grief. Martha, she runs angrily to Jesus, saying, in effect, where were you? Why have you let this happen? Mary, well, she seems stunned and almost unable to react. It's interesting that Jesus meets both the angry Martha and the stunned Mary and offers them hope. As you probably know, in that story, Lazarus is brought back to life as a sign, as a sign that God can raise the dead, that Jesus is the life giver. Martha might be the one who was angry, the one who rushed at Jesus and said, why, where were you? But she was have the one who had faith. She said to Jesus, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. And she said that, not after Lazarus had been raised when she saw all the signs. She said that in faith. She was a remarkable woman, Martha. As Ezekiel struggles to believe the bones of Israel can live again, but sees in his vision God bringing them back, so Martha declares her faith in God, even in the context of the death of her brother. Faith, as for Ezekiel and for Martha, so for us, is sometimes about having to believe before God brings the change. Believing in the daylight while it is still night. We have a long night, a long night of restriction, isolation, and for quite a few, it will also bring grief. This virus is not going away soon. It will hurt, it will harm lives as well as livelihoods. Christians will not be exempt and nor should we be. But by our lives, by our values, grace, mercy and peace, even in difficult times, and in our hope and our hoping, we can bring the light the love and the life of God to others. In this tragedy, we can share love. In this reminder, we should remember God. In this crisis, we can see God's call and God's challenge to us to live differently. Even in judgment, we can find hope and peace. Jesus with us, just as he was with Mary and Martha, as he was with the disciples, as he is with his people in all the changing scenes of life. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew. Give me the faith of Martha to know that you are the resurrection and the life. Give me the solidarity, <coughs> give me the solidarity of Ezekiel to be with those who struggle. But give us, like to him, the precious gift of hope in you. And so let's pray. Let's pray to God who alone makes us dwell in safety. We pray for all who are affected by the coronavirus, through illness or isolation or anxiety, that they may find relief and recovery. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who are guiding our nation and the nations of the world at this time and shaping national policies, that they may have courage and humility, that they may make wise decisions. And in a moment of quiet, we bring to God our leaders, local, regional and national, asking for God to be with them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our doctors and nurses and medical researchers, for our hospital staff, for their continuing health, their strength and their well-being. We thank you for them and all that they are doing. In their care and in their skill and in their insight, may they be kept in health and may they restore others to health. 
and in the quiet we bring to God those who work in our local hospitals, in our GP surgeries, in our care homes and our hospices. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our homes, for parents trying to help their children, for those who feel trapped and shut in, for those who feel they are not coping, that they may find an inner peace and a strength in God. And in the quiet we bring to God those who live next to us, for those in our neighbourhood, in our street, in our village, in our community. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the vulnerable and the fearful, for the ill and for the dying. We pray for those who struggle in body, mind or spirit, that they may know your comfort and peace. And in the quiet we bring to God those who are on our hearts at this moment. Family members, friends, those that we know who are sick. And we also remember those who have no one to pray for them and no one who cares. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And in these troubled and worrying times, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so we continue with our isolation, we continue with this strange and peculiar way of living. But let us ask for God's blessing. Let us ask for God's blessing for ourselves and God's blessing for those that we love and care for. Let us ask for God's blessing for our communities and let us continue to ask God's blessing on our medical staff, our doctors, our nurses, our hospitals. And as we pray for our own communities, let us remember those other parts of the world where there is greater suffering and greater difficulty. Please do use our church website, our Facebook page to post comments, to post prayers, to share with each other what God is doing, what we are learning. Please let us support each other in prayer and practically, keeping an eye out for our neighbours, giving a phone call to those we feel may be on their own in practical ways, wanting to share the love and the peace of God with others. And so may we know God's blessing. May the peace of God, which passes our, all our understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with us, with those whom we love and all for whom we pray, this Sunday, this coming week through this time of difficulty, and always. Amen.